I'm 77 years old. I've lived in Bradenton, Florida for 15 years, and my husband Dave and I do beach crafts. Beach crafts are about the ocean and the beach life. My husband does the cutting and the, the painting of the large stuff, and then I just add the accent points. It gives us something to do, and it makes us feel better being able to do something. My name is Nita, and I have advanced macular degeneration. I have it in both eyes. Age-related macular degeneration, or AMD for short, um, is a leading cause of significant visual loss in uh, Americans over the age of 50. Basically, you can think of the eye as a camera, where light enters the eye through the front part of the eye and gets focused by the lens, and that light gets focused onto the retina, which is, which is like the film of the camera, and that information is processed and goes through the optic nerve, which has a direct connection to the brain. So the macula is actually the very center part of the retina, so it's the most important for central vision. This is our vision for reading, for driving, for seeing our grandkids, so it's really the most important area of the retina for, for vision. As far as the macular goes, I don't have central vision, and my night vision isn't, isn't good at all. There are really three big risk factors in AMD. Age, so advancing age. Um, the second one is genetics. So we know there is a genetic component to AMD. But the final thing, the, probably one of the most important things that we can do, and, and I really encourage my patients to do, is to stop smoking. Because we know smoking is a big time risk factor uh, for worsening their AMD. The only risk factor I had is I have high blood pressure and genetics from my father. He didn't get it until later in life. He was probably in his late 80s, and he never received treatment. There are two forms of AMD. There's the dry type, and there's the wet type. The dry type makes up, up approximately 80, 90% of cases, so it's the vast majority of cases of AMD that we see in clinical practice. In about 10 to 20% of patients with the dry type, they can develop what we call the wet type, where you get this creation of a new blood vessel that's abnormal, that should not be there. And that's the blood vessel that we see that can burst suddenly and bleed and cause devastating visual loss in patients with wet AMD. I was diagnosed with dry macular one time when I went just to a regular doctor for glasses. And then about 15 years later, I went to get glasses again, and they thought it had developed into wet, and so I was sent to a specialist, and I do have wet. In dry AMD, uh, patients that have very early changes may not have any symptoms at all. As the disease progresses, patients can report distorted vision, uh, maybe straight lines become wavy and distorted or curved, or just a sense of blurry vision. My symptoms were when I was putting on the eye makeup, I had closed one eye and I couldn't see my face really out of my right eye. That was really the first sign and then from there it went on to when I was driving one night, the reflectors in the road looked like they were three or four feet high. And then and the headlights coming at me were blue. In wet AMD, when patients develop um, that new blood vessel that can grow and bleed, that can also cause pretty significant and severe uh, visual loss. They may develop a uh, area of blurring or, or blackness in the very center of their vision and can be very, very sudden. So it's, it's a very concerning, very sometimes devastating uh, presentation of visual loss. Well, I think the most important thing is to have a yearly exam and if you have any vision abnormalities, you should go right away and have it checked. The only way we can really detect AMD is with a full dilated eye exam. So that's why it's so important to have a comprehensive eye exam that includes dilation of the, of the eyes in order to be able to examine the retina properly and be able to classify or diagnose AMD. So we want to find that conversion from dry to wet uh, AMD in the patients that will develop that. And the way we do that is through encouraging uh, monitoring at home with the patients um, either by the Amsler grid uh, which is a technique that uses a, a lined piece of paper with a dot in the center. 
that helps to uh, you check each eye individually and, and you make sure the lines are nice and straight. If they ever become wavy or distorted, that may be a sign of, of what A and B and, and would need to be examined right away. At this time, I'm doing the high blood pressure medications, which is keeping it under control. And I also wear sunglasses when I go outside and try to have a healthy lifestyle. Exactly. Great, please. So Anita's just the model patient. So even though she has advanced AMD, she's been able to maintain excellent vision throughout the, the four and a half years I've treated her. No fluid or bleeding um, from what AMD, so it's inactive. But we truly are blessed to live in a time when we do have now great treatments that help to preserve and improve patients' vision that develop what AMD. We have a special class of medications called anti-VEGF or anti-VEGF uh, injections that have been revolutionary in uh, saving patients' vision with what AMD. And Nita's actually receiving one of those um, anti-VEGF injections and she's doing extremely well. They give me numbing drops when I first get into his office and by the time he comes in, my eye is numb and there's really no pain. There's a little pressure, but there's, there's no pain. At this point, I just go every 12 weeks for the right eye and the left eye I go every five weeks. And, there was a time that I went more frequently, but they seem to be working and they're keeping my vision stable. I can remember a time when patients used to lose vision. There was nothing that we could do. Uh, we didn't have any great treatments for it. But nowadays we have these eye injections that are available and they're extremely effective uh, at, at helping patients with wet AMD and really saving their vision. So we're really lucky to have great treatments available now for wet AMD. Uh, and actually on the horizon, we have a lot more treatments that are being investigated um, that are looking to be approved in the near future, as well as better drug delivery systems of those medications. So it's a very exciting time in retina and ophthalmology for new treatments for AMD. So currently, uh, Nita's prognosis is excellent, and my goal is to, to keep her vision where it's at right now for as long as possible. To me, I think I'm very fortunate because as far as I'm concerned, I can live a normal life and I have the support of my husband and also excellent care. It's worrisome that her sight may go, but at the same time, the treatment she's getting has been very positive and we're looking for a good future. At this point, I really don't fear the future because every time I go in, my vision has stayed the same. Nita's condition has really drawn us closer together as a couple. I think the only thing that's has really impacted is my reading a, a book. I have to use a kendo now, but Otherwise, I think I live a, live a pretty natural, normal life, and I'm thankful that I'm able to still do the intricate paintings that I'm able to do because everything is of smaller detail. Our work is, is really extremely beautiful, and it's just a, a pleasure for me, and the greatest gift that she can give me is just living her life to the fullest.